Um, and welcome everyone to uh, this month's um, IARPIC Atmosphere Collaboration Team meeting. Um, we're thrilled to have you all here. Um, just some technical notes for today. Um, this meeting is being recorded and I will be note taking, um, which will be posted on the IARPIC website um, after um, our meetings over today. Um, and I'm sure everyone are Zoom pros at this point, but just as a reminder to please keep your uh, microphone muted um, during the presentations. And if you have any questions, you can always put them into the chat box um, during any presentations, and we will make sure that those get asked um, after any um, after the presentations are over. Um, and in a second, we'll go over the agenda for today, and we'll get the ball rolling. Um, and with that, I can hand it over to Barry. Thank you, Andrew. Um, hi, Stabur, uh, myself, and uh, Jen Mercer are the co-chairs for the, atmos the Arctic Atmosphere Collaboration Team. And uh, just a brief background on IARPIC, it is the Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee. It brings together leaders from 16 agencies, departments, and offices across the US federal government to enhance research in the Arctic. It was created in 1984. In July 2010, a presidential memo established IARPIC as an interagency working group of the National Science and Technology Council at, uh, under the Committee on Environment. Um, and the director of the National Science Foundation serves as IARPIC's chair. And the atmospheric collaboration team is has the goal of advancing our process level understanding of the changing composition and dynamics of the arctic atmosphere and the resulting changes to surface energy budgets and we have on our web page uh, a dozen or so um, performance elements and these are sort of the list of tasks and uh, the type of science that we are uh, interested in learning more about. And uh, our first uh, performance element is about advanced understanding of Arctic atmospheric processes and their integrated impact on the surface energy budget and mid-latitude weather. That's 2.1 and 2.1.1 lists uh, Mosaic as one of those projects that is contributing to that. And I'm excited today to, um, to have speakers from YAP and Mosaic and um, uh, do we want to, um, how many people do we, we have 21 people. I don't know if we have, do we think we have time to, um, let's go ahead and do a roll call, I guess. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, since we have a small, medium sized group today. Yeah. Um, so Barry, uh, I guess you already started. So, um, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm at NASA headquarters. I'm the program scientist for the tropospheric composition program and heist. Hi, everyone. I'm Heist Sabor from the University of Colorado's Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences. Nice to see you all. Should we go in alphabetical order according to Zoom? Yeah, why don't you, why don't you call on people, Barry, and just go sure. down the list. Andrew? Andrew? Yeah, so um, hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Vilnov. I am a Canals Policy Fellow with NOAA Fisheries, also serving on the IRFX Secretariat. Okay, Matthew. Hey, Matthew Shoup, University of Colorado, and Noah in Boulder, and uh, you'll be hearing from me in a little bit. Okay, Murat. Uh, hi, um, Murat Aydin, I'm from UC Irvine. I'm an atmospheric scientist, also an ice core scientist. I work at the intersection of uh, those two, present day and past atmosphere. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Jasmine. Hi, I'm Jasmine Lai, Projects Data Coordinator at the Arctic Data Center, and also will be presenting shortly. Okay, thank you. Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Check Snyder. Uh, I'm a um, retired uh, Navy physician now doing uh, volunteer work around climate change in the Arctic and uh, uh, on some other IARPIC uh, uh, teams and just checking this one out. Nice to okay. be here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Richard. 
I'm Richard Cullither. I'm the modeling, one of the modeling subteam code leads. Um, I'm with NASA Goddard and the University of Maryland. Thank you. Is it Seiji? Yes, um, I'm Seiji Kato uh, from NASA Langley um, doing the radiation budget. Thank you, Seiji. Thank Sally. You. I'm Sally McFarlane from the Department of Energy. I am a program manager for the Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Facility, and I'm also a co-chair of the IRPIC Observing Subteam. Thank you. Leslie. I'm Leslie Harton, a research meteorologist with Ceres at the University of Colorado and also NOAA's Physical Science Laboratory. Thanks for joining us. Oystein. Hello. I'm um, Eystein Gude from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. I work with uh, YOP and with the global, uh, WMO Global Cryosphere Watch and SIAS as well. Thank you. Demao. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, my name is Demao Zhang and uh, from PNL. Uh, right now I'm the uh, I'm translator for the um, One Boundary Layer Group. Okay, thank you, Ben. Hi, I'm Ben Kopek. I'm a postdoc at the University of Alaska Anchorage, working to help better understand the Arctic hydrologic cycle. Thanks. Okay, thanks for joining us. Michael. Hey, I'm a scientist at the University of Colorado. I'm a member of Polar Processes Group at NOAA. Okay, hi, Long. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Hai Long from Pacific Northwest National Lab. I'm an atmospheric modeler working on high latitude earth system modeling. Okay, thank you. Irina. Hello, I'm sorry for delay. Um, Irina Petropavlovsky, I work at the University of Colorado Boulder and uh, at the Global Monitoring Lab, um, mostly concerned with the uh, surface ozone observations in Arctic. Okay, thank you. Did we already have Michael Gallagher or do we have a different Michael? We already have Michael Gallagher. Okay, Caleb. Hi, I'm Caleb Schulte, a meteorologist here at the U.S. Army Cold Regions Test Center near Fort Greeley, Alaska. Okay, uh, Bo. I think I think that might be our last one. Did I did I miss anybody? Hi, I'm Jonathan Blythe from the um, Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, and I okay. also co-lead the uh, IR Big Data Collaboration Team. Thank you, Jonathan. And it looks like Wilbur is another person I missed. Hi, Wilbur Dwyer, Los Alamos National Laboratory. I'm co-lead of the Modeling Sub Team and the Physical Oceanography Cell Forum Team. Thanks for joining us, Wilbur. And, and Bo is having problems with his microphone. That's okay, Bo. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, we see you now. Good. Yeah. So, oh, Min, Min Yun. Okay, go ahead, Min Yun. Yeah. So, my name is Mui Wang. I'm a research scientist from University of Washington and uh, of the Seacoast, and also work at the PMEL on the Arctic climate change and between the atmosphere and the sea ice. Thank you, Mui. All right. Uh, anyone else that I forget? <laughs> Hi, my name is Bill Manley at the University of Colorado Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, INSTAR. I'm a research scientist there, and I also co-lead the Polar Observing Assets Working Group under SEON. Okay, thank you, Bill. I should apologize. I'm using a web version of Zoom, and so I, I'm struggling to, <laughs> to see, see, the, see everyone. Oh, and um, we just had a NASA person, Christine Mataya, join. But wh why don't we get a, um, started with our first presentation? I think it's Oystein on Yop. Okay. I will, Do you want to uh, share your screen? Yes, just a okay. second. Second here. While Oystein's getting that pulled up, I just want to say that it's great to see um, a lot of familiar faces, but also a bunch of new faces from different teams here. So it's, it's really nice to have a diverse group today. Oh, that's working. That's good. We, we can see your screen. Good. Started in the wrong end, but fortunately, I, I think it worked. So I will give you an update on the uh, the YOP data management. Uh, I'm not sure now if uh, Michael would like to step in on the slides that Tanil um, sent me. 
if so just tell me uh, uh, Michael when we uh, we come there if not I will go uh, briefly through them so there's a, I've got input from a number of people here so it's Siri Joe that Anil and um, and Michael has given input to this uh, presentation so the things I would like to touch into uh, it's the YOP data portal the concept the implementation and the interoperability specifications or um, interfaces of the YOP data portal I think probably the most interesting part of the YOP data portal is the YOP SiteMIP project. So I will come back to that in more, more detail. And then we would like to put the YOP data portal in the, in the Arctic context through the activities of the joint SEAN IASC Arctic Data Committee, and also some linkages to the um, uh, WMO and the WMO uh, activities uh, in this, uh, since YOP is a WMO activity. So the, <clears throat> sorry, the YOP data portal, the purpose is to provide an overview of the data sets that are relevant to YOP. Uh, and it's not a centralized data repository. It's a data portal which retrieves information about data sets hosted uh, through a number of um, data centers. On the right hand side here, you see the uh, the YOP data portal as an aggregator between a number of uh, contributing data centers. In this context, I would like to comment that the bulk of the data is available through the um, Japanese Arctic data system uh, setup uh, of Nippur and also through Pangea. Uh, and uh, we have a, a number of data at MET. And I think I've now forgot yeah, to mention ECMWF, the YOP da um, uh, data set is uh, developed by, uh, by ECMWF and that is available directly from ECMWF. Through the Pangea interface, we are harvesting YOP specific data sets hosted by Pangea, but we are also harvesting information about the Mosaic data sets through, uh, through that portal. Uh, the purpose is to handle both real time data streams and also archived data. The real time data streams are primarily from the WMO community through the uh, WMO global telecommunication system. So the real-time exchange of operational data uh, globally. Uh, and we are following the principles outlined in the WMO information system when it comes to interoperability. We are also linked with the Arctic data management through the SEAN uh, Arctic data committee, as I mentioned. We are reusing the, uh, the setup for the YOP data portal uh, from the WMO Global Cryosphere Watch. So it's the same sort of approach. It's with one central um, discovery metadata repository, but we do not co um, contain the, uh, the data sets themselves in the data portal. Those are served directly from the data centers that are contributing that have the interoperability interfaces that we, uh, we are working with. And we consider the contributing data centers as the authoritative source for the, um, for the information on the data sets. So we do translate the discovery metadata into the search model that we are using, but we are not changing any content of the, um, of the, uh, uh, the discovery metadata, except in one area, which we are still working on, and that's actually improving the tagging and the usage of controlled vocabularies to describe the, uh, the data. So we have some challenges still with that because the structure is usually followed for many of the interoperability interfaces, but not necessarily the semantic content uh, or the semantic annotation. Let me see. So the, how to interact with the YOP data portal. Um, we do have um, a setup for unified data discovery so that you can have a unified or federated search through the uh, data uh, centers that are contributing to YOP. We are currently harvesting discovery metadata using OAI, PMH, OGC, CSW. We have sort of an open search interface working for a harvesting of um, discovery metadata. And we I say need GCMD science keywords here. We, are, um, we do want GCMD science keywords to annotate the, uh, the, the discovery metadata, but we are also working on a translation, for example, from the CF standard names into the GCMD science keywords for this, uh, this purpose. Uh, we can also, in addition to harvesting information, we can parse ACDD, as an attribute convention for data set discovery, directly from NetCDF CF files when they are served over open depths through a threads catalog or something like that. So then we just need an endpoint to, in order to, uh, to, to initiate the, the harvesting. 
and we can traverse the uh, the catalog and extract the uh, the relevant information, including the uh, interoperability interfaces for the uh, for the data. And at, uh, in the end, we also do have a manual ingestion process, a metadata form where you can manually enter some metadata if you want to have your data. Uh, 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 available, you know, so discoverable through the YOP data portal. When it comes to data access, many data sets only have pure HTTP access. If we got opened up or WMS, we will uh, use the WMS and the, uh, the opened up in order to give visualizations and even transformations of data. But that's only for some limited data sets as it is, uh, is now. Yeah, as I did mention, we do data visualization also both on the uh, WMS as a web map service and the, uh, the open app. So the model of how this works is uh, outlined here. We have the core part of the um, York data portal is the cooperating or contributing data centers. Then we are harvesting information into a central metadata catalog and we build data access and discovery services on top of that. These also rely on data transformation services and data visualization services, but those are only available for the uh, data sets that have the proper interoperability interfaces available. The existing functionality, you can check it out yourself if you like to, it's the address is here. It does have a, a search interface that is available through this, uh, uh, just uh, push this, uh, this image. Uh, the look and feel of the site will change before summer, to put it this way. We have a full revamping of the site and the functionality, both front and back ends uh, ongoing now. So we are moving to new infrastructure, new, moving to new software versions. So it will, will look totally different in, uh, within a month or, or two. So we are uh, doing the, the final testing of the setup uh, now. We do for all the data sets that we uh, put in here, we also do some uh, information about, uh, so we put a note, an editorial note when we add a data set. Uh, so, and people can actually register and comment on the data sets if, if they want to, but then it hasn't been much use of that functionality uh, yet. Um, we do also have the possibility of adding um, helper scripts. Uh, we haven't done it much yet. There has been some requests for uh, helper scripts for downloading, for example, the Yop sitemap data in one bulk from the, uh, the threads server. So we do have a, a, a Python script that people can have access to if they like to, to use that because using uh, wget or similar things towards threads can be challenging sometimes. So this is a Python script that actually traverses the, um, the, the structure of, uh, of the, the threads catalogs. And I did mention that we are preparing an update of the system uh, now. Uh, this is just the interfaces. We have a uh, map search and we have uh, these, the, uh, in my screen, it, the, uh, the screenshots weren't that good, but the, uh, you can check it out yourself. You can do a temporal, a spatial, a keyword search, an institution search, and a full text uh, search. If you use the map in order to, uh, uh, to identify the uh, geographical region you are interested in, you can actually modify the details of that uh, afterwards, if you, if you like to, through editing the, uh, the numbers. And then you have the search results displayed on a map. And there is also data in the southern hemisphere, so it's it's both hemispheres, although the bulk of the information is from the Arctic. Um, this is just to show um, how the metadata looks like. This will change. Uh, you also have built-in visualization, for example, for the GPS data that we harvest from the uh, WMO uh, uh, operational exchange of uh, of information, we do create time series and we make those time series available for downloading, visualization and transformation, if you if you like to. Uh, the job site map uh, part is probably the most interesting part of the, uh, the, the job project in the sense that you have um, a setup uh, on a number of super sites or uh, where you can uh, um, intercompare the, uh, the modeling outputs, and you can compare the, the model outputs with the observations. I don't know, uh, Michael, would you like to uh, comment on this or should I go through it? Sure, I'd be happy to um, give a quick rundown so you're not <laughs> pinned down. Sure, so as Oystein said, this is, um, SiteMIP in particular is a coordinated process-based model evaluation project. So we're hoping to evaluate high frequency observations at some of the select sites around the Arctic. 
And the idea is to create homogenized data sets so that for modelers or anyone interested in the data to evaluate those processes can do coordinated analyses with all of the observations available at the various super sites and the data will look the same and be in a format that we've coordinated directly with the modelers that will make it easy for their ingest. Um, in particular, if you can click to the next slide. Um, we're looking at a few very specific periods that were coordinated with the YAP, um, with the YAP group. And there's a few special observing periods as well as a targeted observing period for the mosaic data set. And these periods are going to be coordinated to science analyses with the modelers, um, hoping to look at processes where there are extended observations. So for example, there are extra sons for these particular periods of time. And we've worked um, in concert to make sure that these data sets are, best, uh, are the best data sets possible for evaluating these time periods. Uh, if can you go ahead and click to the next slide? Great, thank you. So the idea being that you have many, many different instruments at a particular site, and there are many, many different mentors, um, in particular for things like Mosaic, but even at all sites. And coordinating the ingest and the output of these files is um, an entire procedure. And so I'm um, speaking because I'm working on developing a toolkit, a Python toolkit to do this. So this kind of represents the flow of data. It's a pretty crude outline, out, outline of that, but you have mentors for specific projects and those mentors know their data sets very well. And we wanna make it very easy to ingest that data and to output um, a final data product in a format that's cohesive and homogenous. Um, and there's a, quite a bit of considerations involved here in terms of transparency, in terms of being able to um, know exactly what data went into where, and then that way it's all contained inside of these, this NetCDF format in a way that modelers can understand and, and interpret it. Um, specifically, I'm working on the Mosaic data sets, and Matt Shoup will talk a little bit more about that when he talks more about the Mosaic data sets as a whole. Um, but the coordination for the MODFs is among all of the observers of these super sites, and we're working directly with the modelers to create a data product that can be accessed from the YAP portal that will be interpretable and homogenous across the sites. Thank you. I think that was the last slide on this. Uh, one thing I would like to add to the um, um, comments here is that, uh, for example, when it comes to the radio sounds, we do also have the high resolution radio sounds. So not only the standard uh, WMO uh, pressure levels, but also the, uh, the, uh, the high resolution uh, data. Currently, we do have most of the model data uh, for the, uh, for the uh, 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 super sites. We do not have any, I think, observational data yet. So that's uh, still to come uh, in this context. So quite eager to see the, uh, the observations. But when we have both of them together there, it's becoming quite a powerful uh, setup to use. I would just continue briefly with the, the Arctic data system. So this, I, I forgot to put on the, the credits for this. This is actually the uh, say on IASC uh, Arctic Data Committee. It's taken from the, uh, the mapping uh, activity that uh, I think the, um, it was, uh, it's Peter Pulsifer and uh, Brendan Billingsley that created it initially. We are still working on the, uh, the uh, triple store for this in order to, to, to uh, map it uh, uh, correctly. But um, the, the, a major activity of the uh, SEAN Arctic Data Committee has been ma mapping of actors in the Arctic data system through a sequence of, of workshops. And through these workshops, we have been able to identify the most common interoperability standards used. I've li listed some of them here. I won't go into the details. Uh, when it comes to the discovery level, there is some sort of harmonization uh, on, on a number of standards. And uh, there is a strong focus to the polar to global interoperability workshops and hackathons now uh, uh, on the, uh, the schema.org uh, approach. But I think we have the same challenges with the schema.org approach as we have with the, um, the, uh, the original uh, interoperability interfaces like the CSW and OAI PMH and open search uh, for that sake. So we've uh, um, implemented interoperability interfaces in line with the re also suggestions so far through the Arctic Data Committee. 
and we are relying on these uh, uh, machine interfaces to exchange information with the uh, relevant uh, data repositories that we are collaborating uh, with. And within this map, which is quite hard to look, this is uh, a cloud for the international organizations. You do also have the uh, Polar Prediction Project, which is running the, uh, the YAP uh, activity, also listed in here. So it's part of the, uh, the, the total Arctic um, image. Uh, uh, when it comes to the interaction with WMO, uh, we are um, actively extracting information, also free and open uh, information from the WMO global telecommunication system. And uh, where it's circulated in uh, buffer files, the WMO buffer files, pretty close to encryption. And we are converting it to NetCDF CF and uh, putting it on a threads data server that people can access uh, the data through. Currently, we do have uh, the sonotic weather stations. We have the, uh, the radio sounds uh, available. We are now working on buoys in order to have them in more detail available through this uh, system. The bulk of the data is still from the Arctic, but we are able to extract information from the, from the Antarctic as well in this, uh, in this context. The upcoming uh, part, uh, important thing onwards now is that in addition to the existing data center that, uh, that we are um, um, uh, interacting with, we would like to have the outputs of the YOP endorsed projects linked to the data portal as well. Uh, and uh, in order to do this, we need uh, standardized interoperability interfaces, as we mentioned earlier, in line with the activities of the uh, Arctic Data Committee where we can actually reuse the, uh, the, uh, the data sets and, uh, and make them, uh, also the, sorry, we can reuse the interoperability interfaces on a larger number of uh, data providers. So currently we're working on integrating also the uh, CMIP, uh, PAMIP, also polar amplification model into comparison data within the, uh, the YOP data portal as well. Thank you. I think this was what I intended to say now. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'm going to propose that we get the second talk done and then have all the questions at the end. So I think, is it Matthew, are you driving? Uh, yeah, I will drive that. Uh, you should see my screen now, hopefully. Great. Well, um, back again to speak about Mosaic. Uh, I've spoken with Iarpic a number of times about Mosaic and I hope that you all know what Mosaic is, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit about that. Um, so there's three of us actually going to talk here. Uh, I'll pro provide kind of a, a larger overview about Mosaic data policy and some of the kind of bigger picture perspective there. Um, then Jasmine will talk about the Arctic Data Center and Damal will talk about the ARM uh, data archive and ARM program aspects here. So those are both kind of NSF and ARM related aspects here uh, and their data. So We'll get into straight into this. Um, here's a, I, I think I have a one slide summary of Mosaic, maybe two slides here. Mosaic is we basically, we took this ship, the, the Polar Stern icebreaker from Germany and froze it into the Arctic sea ice for a full year. Uh, and we got back at the late last year, October. Uh, and we're actually quite successful in spite of COVID and all the other challenges there. Uh, the map on the left shows the drift trajectory. The solid lines are where the ship was drifting, the dotted lines are where ships uh, were kind of moving around. And over the course of the year, the polar stern drifted across the uh, Arctic ice pack uh, from the red to the yellow to the green and to the blue colors there, and actually arrived at the ice edge and we had to relocate it back towards the North Pole to finish out the year. Uh, and that's the purple section there. So this is the, the year in the Arctic. Uh, and it was very much uh, an interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary campaign. Uh, cutting across uh, the atmosphere, ice and ocean, looking at physics, chemistry, biology. So a very diverse uh, collection of observations made uh, as part of Mosaic. A, a little bit of by the numbers here, there were 20 nations involved in funding this uh, and 37 nations involved in terms of the people that made it out to the, to, to the site in the Arctic. We had seven different icebreakers or ships involved, more than 80 institutions involved, more than 440 field participants making it out into this site in the Central Arctic. Lots of money spent. Uh, the numbers here, I'm sure, are all outdated at this point. Uh, we continue to spend money as we should because uh, we've collected a, a great amount of data here. 
But that is really the question to hear in this presentation is how do we manage this data from this huge uh, activity in the central Arctic? Um, so a few words about the mosaic data philosophy uh, and, and the approach in general. One is that mosaic is highly international. And so you can imagine that dealing with data is not easy uh, when we cut across national boundaries. We have different agencies involved in agency policies and what have you. And you know, we, we definitely, um, at least for myself, wanted to approach this with as open a policy as possible from the very beginning. Uh, and that faced a, a number of different issues as we tried to bring together the international community. Uh, so that flavored uh, ultimately the policy that we arrived at. It's also a very collaborative and interdisciplinary project. So we wanted a data uh, a approach to data that would really establish this culture uh, that enabled cross-cutting research and communication of ideas. And so that's really important uh, as well. And then of course we needed to consider the legacy, right? This is a big project, it's really important. So who's using this data? How are they gonna use it? Over what time scales? These are all things that really had to play into this, this notion of the data policy. So there is a mosaic data policy. It's actually published at Zenodo. So it's got a DOI, it's out there for anybody to read. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of people that are involved in that. Uh, it actually took many years to pull this together. Um, uh, but fortunately, uh, we were able to pull it together uh, before actually going to the field. So that was very nice. And it's really guided a lot of what we've done uh, with Mosaic. So just some of the highlights from this, this policy. Uh, here are some of the key points. Um, first off is all participants have to sign this policy. So it means you've read it and you agree to what's in there and, and agree to follow what's in there. So that's really important. So that we're all playing by the same guidebook here, the same rule book. Um, participants and endorsed projects, and there's a whole process for endorsing projects, we're all part of a consortium, right? This is the Mosaic Consortium. So these are people that are playing by that, that same rule book. Uh, within that rule book, it, it says that raw data, so this is data being collected, must be moved into this kind of central storage for open access to everybody within the consortium uh, at the latest in January of this year. So that basically means that if you're part of the consortium, you get open access to all the data uh, from right from the beginning. Um, there's also some details about laboratory data, which takes a little longer to, uh, to pull together to, to do some of the laboratory analyses. So there's some kind of staged release of initial and full uh, lab data sets over the time to come. But importantly, all data for Mosaic must be made publicly available by the 1st of January, 2023. That's still a couple of years down the road. It's not great uh, as far as I'm concerned, but this is what we could negotiate uh, to make the data all publicly available uh, within a, about a couple of years after the end of the project. Now, the data providers though, can give their data out to anybody at any time and can make their data public at any time. And fortunately, we have some great examples uh, of that that we'll, we'll touch on here uh, going forward. Um, Prior to the public release of the data, the data provider has to be involved in the use of that data, right? Invited to be a collaborator, et cetera. So there's uh, that kind of expectation. And of course we encourage those kind of things later on as well, but after data is public, well, it's public. Um, there are a, a set of expected acknowledgements for how you acknowledge uh, participation or using data from this project. Um, Pangea is the main repository for mosaic observations, um, but through some negotiations that we put together. Other uh, repositories can also be uh, part of this consortium through agreement. And uh, there are a couple of great ones that we're gonna hear from uh, today here, uh, the ARC Data Center and the ARM Data Archive. Um, and of course, we encourage data publications to help to uh, educate the community about the, the data sets themselves. So the mosaic data flow is kind of captured in this conceptual diagram from the Alfred Wegener Institute. Uh, spanning from uh, you know, this initial collection of data uh, into the system that um, documents the, the measurements. There's all this metadata that had to be input uh, initially, uh, and the data actually comes into the system, and there's a, a variety of tools for analysis and monitoring the data along the way uh, and kind of supporting the archival, eventually leading to uh, putting the data into repositories. And, and I'll just say that uh, this is a pretty complicated process. My perspective on this is that Wow, this system is seriously complicated um, that Avi set up. It was a challenge to nav navigate, but in the end, it's actually led to uh, some pretty neat functionality. So, you know, you gotta go through a little bit of pain to get to the, the benefit of this functionality. So um, there really is this nice curation of the data. I would say in the field, there was 
what I'll call modest adherence to the data flow expectations, right? Getting data in near real time into an archive that a colleague can grab it. Uh, you know, a lot of people did that, not everybody. Uh, but there has been very good adherence to the general data sharing aspects that are outlined in the Mosaic data policy. Um, there is very limited data available to the public currently, uh, and that's, uh, I would say, a little bit unfortunate. ARM, that you will hear about from the DOE ARM program, ARM's a great example of the, the opposite end, where that data is going into archives as soon as it can be uh, uploaded to the archive, and it's a publicly available to anybody. So to me, that's a great example of, of how you know, we from the U.S. are, are kind of leading and, and demonstrating how you know, data should be open to, to everybody uh, as soon as possible. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is how the interrepository linkages will actually happen. And, you know, we'll hear from some of our U.S. repositories and how the actual link with Pangea will be ma manifested is something that uh, I'll be interested to see. I know there's a lot of uh, really important people that are having those conversations. So I believe that it will play out successfully, but uh, some of that is really to be seen. As far as the U.S. involvement in Mosaic, this just kind of provides a little summary of the lay of the land. Right? NSF has uh, been an important player. The Office of Polar Programs funded uh, 13 projects with 23 different awards to go out into the field and make measurements. You can see all kinds of topics I've listed there, many of which are atmospheric topics, so very relevant for this group, but also relevant for many other groups. Uh, so looking at a variety of different things. So we'll have data sets coming out about energy fluxes, gas fluxes, atmospheric structure, water vapor, uh, and so much more. The Department of Energy Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Program uh, is heavily invested in Mosaic, put a big facility for uh, making atmospheric measurements on the ship and on the ice near the ship. And so, like I said, that data is going into their archive. And the Atmospheric System Research Program at DOE is now starting to consider and fund science to go along with that nice observational effort. Um, NOAA, through the Physical Sciences Laboratory and the Arctic Research Program, uh, have funded some of the development of instrumentation, have supported operational uh, modeling, uh, and some data product development. NASA has also been involved mostly on the sea ice products, uh, not so much on atmospheric products, but still a really important investment to look at the sea ice. Uh, and my institution, the University of Colorado has kicked in some support for a variety of things along the way. So that's kind of the, the lay of the land. But importantly, some of these key uh, contributions will go into uh, data repositories that are on the US side. Uh, and so this is important both for our kind of uh, national agency metrics and the use of the data, uh, and, and following our own policies. And then lastly, I just wanna to touch briefly on what Michael said a little bit ago. So for Mosaic, we're creating one of these merged observatory data files that, that Michael talked about. And this is, uh, we already have preliminary versions and pushing forward on this to include, you know, right now a lot of atmospheric parameters, uh, things like upper air, uh, surface meteorology, uh, energy budgets, radiation, et cetera, a lot of cloud variables, aerosol variables, and ideally then extending to include uh, variables from other areas, including sea ice, ocean properties, uh, and more. And so this, uh, there's a, a kind of a initial version of this that's being uh, developed right now, and it will expand in time as we get access to quality control of data and can bring them into the system. Uh, but this is a really important approach, uh, as you can see with the yacht presentation before, to really you know, bring a lot of the mosaic data into a frame that can be uh, readily accessible to broad audiences. And so with that, I'm gonna hand over the baton to Jasmine Lai, who can talk about the uh, NSF-sponsored uh, Arctic Data Center. Thank you, Matt. Uh, hello, everybody again. I'm Jasmine from the NSF Arctic Data Center, and we serve as like, the primary data and software repository for the Arctic session of the NSF Polar Programs. And we've been helping Mosaic researchers funded by NSF to archive their data and metadata from the expedition with us. Next slide. Yes, so typically users will submit their data and metadata after being in the field through our web form. Uh, next slide. But for larger data sets that may contain either hundreds of files or files larger than 100 gigabytes, we can provide alternative file transfer methods, such as getting their data directly from the Mosaic Central Storage, MCS, uh, Globus, SFTP, and also help these researchers add their data Data, data and metadata programmatically. So once submitted, the team will follow up 
via email with any comments uh, before moving forward with processing the data set. We, after all that, we'll send the finalized data set for the researcher for their approval. And once approved, we'll assign a DOI and make this data set public. Next slide. So for Mosaic, we expect to have over 80 data sets from this expedition. And I've summarized some of the data that's related to atmospheric research that we're expecting here. Next slide. Uh, when these data sets are available, all public data sets can be found through our search interface. And we are actively working with researchers as they uh, have their data sets ready to archive. Um, there aren't any Mosaic data sets publicly available on the Arctic Data Center yet, but we will be adding new Mosaic data sets as they become available. So please stay tuned. Um, next slide. Uh, and all the data that we have is licensed at the time of upload as either CC0 or CC BY. And because we license the data this way, this enables these data to be reusable and downloadable for reuse and th synthesis work. Uh, next slide. Uh, and if you do use a data set uh, from the RT Data Center, you should always cite your data set in your paper or publication and also register that citation with us. Even if it is your own data set, you should also be registering this citation. So um, this will allow us to track the usage of this data set over time and, um, and keep track of that. Uh, next slide. Uh, so for the Mosaic project, we will also be making sure the metadata is harvestable by Pangea so that the metadata will be also discoverable there. Next slide. Uh, for this project, we will also have uh, customized data portals that will bring together all the data from Mosaic or all the data from a particular collaboration award at, that NSF funded all in one uh, convenient place. The Mosaic data portals uh, are also like the data not quite ready yet uh, for public view, but I here have uh, included the DBO distributed biological observatory portal here as an example. And in this portal, you can find multiple uh, pages with more information about the work as well as a data page that shows all the data from a project alongside some custom filters that you see at the top there on transect researcher and vessel that allows us to highlight areas that the user might want to filter by and drill down into those data sets. Uh, next slide, please. And then finally, we're also working on adding these semantic annotations from a custom ontology to all data sets from Mosaic. And this will align with the vocabulary around event IDs at Pangea. Uh, the Mosaic portals will be leveraging these uh, semantic annotations in our custom filters that will allow the users to search across Mosaic data sets using terms such as the device used in collecting these measurements or the leg of the expedition this data was collected on and using these terms as part of an ontology rather than just strings in maybe the keyword section will help reduce the ambiguity in the search and also provide context to the terms that are used. Uh, next slide. And this concludes my part of the presentation and thank you for having me. If you have any questions afterwards, if we don't get to it at the Q&A period, you can email us at support at rtdata.io. Okay, now Duan Zong will uh, talk about the ARM programs. Hello, uh, my name is Damao Zhang and uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the ARM data and translator support for Mosaic. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the the atmospheric radiation measurement user facility is a um, multi-laboratory uh, U.S. Department uh, of Energy scientific um, user facility, and currently there are there are about three there are three uh, fixed location atmospheric observatories at the uh, Southern Great Plains, um, uh, the North Slope of Alaska, and the Eastern North Atlantic. It, it you can you can see those are the uh, orange um, 
origin pins uh, in the in the in the map on the right. And um, um, of um, particular interest is the uh, the NOS uh, the NSA site, uh, which studied to uh, which located at the uh, the uh, north of Alaska and uh, studied to collect data since um, since 1997. So it's been more than uh, 20 years of uh, observation there. Um, uh, besides of uh, besides of the fixed location um, um, observatories, uh, I'm also offers mobile and uh, aerial facilities. Um, for example, there are right now there are three um, uh, mobile facilities that uh, equipped with various of uh, atmospheric obs observing. Uh, instruments that can be requested by uh, by scientists to, to be deployed at um, um, at different places um, around the world. Uh, in the in the map on the right, uh, those are the pins that we see uh, green colors and the labels labeled with M. Those are the um, previous uh, mobile facility uh, uh, fuel campaigns, and as as you can see, uh, one of the uh, there are several interested fuel campaigns. Once the uh, the mobile facility deployment at the Olympic Talk Point in Alaska, and uh, the most uh, two recent that uh, over the uh, Arctic region, the uh, Combo and uh, and Mosaic. Um, for uh, for the uh, for the um, aerial facilities, um, it's off also offers the this uh, aerial uh, measure, measurement at the at the uh, um, uh, fixed uh, fixed location observatories and also the uh, AMF deployment uh, past past few campaigns past um, aerial uh, measurement are involved at the uh, the uh, MPACE and the ASTAC few campaigns. Uh, right now, I'm also um, also developing and and testing uh, the aerial the M and uh, M and aerial system and uh, and the types of more systems that can provide. Uh, in situ measurement at, at different altitude, uh, different altitude. Next slide, please. Um, for the for the instrument and, and the measurement, you can see that um, uh, the standard instrument at the arm arm site covers uh, covers uh, basic meteorology such as uh, temperatures, relative humidity, pressures, wind speed, directions, and precipitation, and column integrated water vapor and the precipitation rate. It also has uh, various uh, um, also has various of radi radiation measurement instrument um, that pro provide both the broadband uh, radiative flux measurement and also the spectral spectral uh, uh, radiation measurement. For cloud properties, uh, um, has uh, advanced uh, radar and lidar uh, measurement uh, with multiple frequencies and uh, and depolarization capabilities. Uh, recently, um, also has uh, has the Scanning, scanning uh, radars and lidars that uh, that can provide the um, the cloud structures within a three dimensional uh, uh, field. Um, uh, for the aerosol properties, um, uh, I'm provide the uh, in, uh, in situ uh, near surface uh, aerosol um, properties such as uh, aerosol optical properties such as the backscatter um, and uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, optical optical scattering and absorption, hygroscopic growth coefficient, uh, uh, and, and extra and, 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 uh, and um, ETC. Um, on the figure here, it shows, the, uh, shows some of the instruments that deployed during the mosaic, uh, that, uh, including the radiation, uh, radiation measurement, uh, light and radar, and also the aerosol um, uh, measurement system. Uh, next slide, please. Um, with those all those measurement, um, with all those measurements, I'm I'm also provide the uh, the the data archive. Um, so if you, you you can go to the the uh, the web page or you can just search the uh, ARM data archive. Uh, it will bring you to the um, to the ARM data discovery web page. Um, um, so uh, over the site you can just uh, you can just register and, and start to search and download the data. Those are provided freely. Uh, um, from the uh, ARM Data Archive Center. Um, so uh, for the ARM data set, some basic uh, information, including the uh, the data for format, uh, are most in the NetCDF format. And uh, you can also, when you order the data, you can also uh, uh, take a quick look plot of the of the data you you uh, you ordered. 
and uh, we have uh, we also have the uh, arm standard uh, office to uh, to make sure that the the uh, arm arm files and the naming uh, uh, following the uh, arm stand standard for the uh, arm data we have uh, several different levels of uh, of data for the a level data it's it it's, it's just the raw data that converted to the net necessity file and uh, and uh, uh, apply the calibration factor and for uh, B level data, um, the instrumenters will uh, check the uh, quality uh, quality flag and apply the uh, quality control to the to the B level data. And uh, because uh, because most of the uh, most of the ARM data are uh, based on remote sensing, those are indirect measurement of of uh, abstract um, uh, uh, structures. Uh, so uh, we we will, will need will, there then there are some work needed to be done in order to provide the uh, qualities that can be and uh, direct, more directly used to, uh, to, uh, for, uh, for cloud process study and also for model uh, validations. Um, so um, the, uh, a group of scientists called the ARM Translator uh, worked with, with uh, co-developers to, to provide those so-called value-added products that provide uh, um, uh, the, uh, the abstract uh, properties that can be directly used uh, uh, by, uh, by scientists. Next slide, please. Uh, for the ARM and Mosaic, uh, during the Mosaic ARM, uh, ARM mobile facility, uh, two AMF2 were deployed uh, on the uh, Polestar um, icebreaker. Here on the, on the left, list the uh, AMF2 uh, instruments that were deployed on the, um, during the Mosaic. And uh, you can see that in, it's including, uh, it's including uh, the sounding system and uh, um, uh, scanning LiDAR and radars and also um, Radiation measurement. Uh, at the same time, uh, the mobile aerosol observing systems were also deployed uh, during the during the mosaic. And on the right, you can see uh, the the list of the instruments that were uh, were uh, deployed during the uh, during mosaic that provide various of aerosol properties. Next slide, please. Oops. Um, uh, I also work with the uh, the uh, ARM Data Archive Center at the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. Provide the uh, provide the ARM Data um, Archive and Sharing um, uh, for the Mosaic. Uh, the ARM Map Data will be uh, will be shared with uh, with with the format that the AWI uh, could index um, uh, in the upcoming Mosaic Data pro um, Portal. And the uh, ARM data center also provides um, provide metadata to the data one as both uh, both ARM and the uh, Pangea member uh, nodes of data, data one, uh, which will help the uh, initial deployment of the metadata sharing. Um, also, the ARM data center applied the specific dissertation that include the reference to Mosaic program that include the uh, project identifying ad identifier for the AWI uh, PS122. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, currently, uh, currently, uh, there, there, uh, most of the raw data during Mosaic that's collected from uh, from the MF2 and uh, and the um, mobile uh, aerosol system has been um, being uh, ingested and, and uh, are available in the in the ARM data archive. So, if you go to the uh, ARM web page, uh, you you just uh, search the Mosaic. Uh, you can get the list of the user can get the list of the uh, the data set that uh, that uh, that is already that are already available for downloading right now. Uh, uh, I tested and and uh, uh, for the mosaic we have uh, we have uh, um, about sixty two data set available, and uh, uh, we also worked with the uh, with the uh, PIs to um, identify that high quality data. Uh, we uh, here we uh, we included as the uh, we labeled as the recommended data set, and we have right now for Mosaic, we have about 30 recommended data set. Um, uh, the ins uh, instrumenters will continue to uh, to uh, work with um, to check the uh, quality of the of the data and uh, and uh, um, to refine the B level data set. Um, for the higher order data product, which we call the annual value product, that provide um, provide various of uh, retrieval uh, retrieval um, Variables are starting uh, to to be uh, produced. Um, next slide, please. For each for each few campaign, uh, we will provide this 
core, uh, core value added product. Um, uh, uh, for the mosaic right now, uh, we identified um, a table of uh, a list of, of core apps that will be provided. For the AOP, it's the aerosol optic properties from AOS. And it, it, it's, planned, it's planned it will be provided maybe uh, next year, uh, maybe the end of this year or next year. And for the uh, Kizan ASCO that provide the cloud boundary radar reflectivity and the radar moment, uh, it will be released soon. Um, and we, we have the uh, uh, LiDAR cloud mask that provide the um, cloud mask uh, has, been, uh, has been completed and it is uh, available through the um, data archive. We have the um, MWR red for liquid water pass and the precipitable water, water vapor that has been completed. And every, every noise filter that provide long wave spectral radiance, uh, which will be released soon. Um, and dolphin line uh, provide the wind profiles and the uh, and vertical velocity st statistics, uh, which is in progress and will be uh, will be uh, available soon. Um, we also have the intra interpolated sounding uh, sounding data that provide uh, continuous pro profiles of temperature, relative humidity, pressure, and, and the wind. Uh, we also have the um, PBR height planet boundary layer height that uh, derived from the sounding. Uh, sounding system, uh, which, which is available right now. Uh, next to slides. Um, there are also um, um, uh, optional VAPs. Those VAPs are, are also very important, but they involve much more, um, much more um, uh, effort to, to develop. Uh, so um, it will take longer. And for, um, for some of the, uh, the core VAP, um, it, it even um, need uh, need to to uh, to um, decide with the with the user to uh, uh, for the user to to request such as the um, the uh, not that uh, provide the forcing data for driving model simulations. Um, so depending on the user request, we will decide whether we are going to produce the uh, Vana for Mosaic or not. Um, that 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 my uh, that. Uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Demel. Uh, that's a lot of data. Um, it's impressive to see that uh, so much data public already. Um, so we only have a couple minutes. Is there? Did anyone write any questions in the chat, or does anyone like to make some comments? Or yeah, it looks like Marat, Marat might have a question. Sure. Go ahead. Oh, hi, I had a quick question. I have to go to another meeting. Um, to the NSF, um, I, I, I think I heard that you asked pe people to um, register the citations or something like that, like come back to the website. Is there a way to, isn't, is there another way to automate that? I mean, are you working on that? Like, because I, I'm guessing that it's most of the time it's just not going to get done. Yeah. Uh, we'd had, are we have tools in place to uh, automatically discover data sets that are um, cited but if you like look across uh, multiple pu publications uh, people put their citations in multiple different ways and cite them differently so the inconsistency um, doesn't allow us to do everything automatically so that's kind of where we hope by having like kind of both um, people registering and also kind of us discovering uh, the data sets uh, uh, citations automatically that will be able to like cover most of uh, the data sets that have been used out there. So is it Jasmine, possible? oh, go ahead. Is it possible to put pressure onto journals a little bit? Like, can you? Like at least some of the major journals, could they just put a report out? Like as far as like these are the data sets we has been cited in our publications, kind of thing. Yeah, there's like kind of multiple different kind of approaches going on, and like kind of part of doing uh, presentations like this, I try to like sneak some of that in there so that more researchers will hear about it and will uh, cite their data sets uh, in their papers and also at the repository so that we can better track these things. But yeah, it's a, it seems like a really straightforward uh, problem, but there's more uh, kind of moving parts at play. That was a great question. Um, 
So Jasmine, every one of your data sets has a DOI. And, and so it's just educating or having the, the journals say, if you're gonna write a paper about a data set, you, you, you must put a reference to, to yeah. the data set. Yeah, part of like the education process, all of our data sets that have been processed by us will have a DOI that's citable. Area, I see uh, Bill Manley has his hand up. Hi, this is just such a tremendous amount of effort and, and so much reward. And um, I think one of the most interesting aspects of, of all this is the potential, if not the actualization of, of some um, harmonizing of uh, the semantics behind variable measured or observation parameter, that sort of thing. And so um, one question I have is, are the variables as defined in the MODFs, are they consistent with the custom uh, ontology through ADC or with whatever Pangea is using? Are you asking me or? Well, it might be for Jasmine, I'm not sure. Um, well, I, I could speak to that a little bit. I, in fact, the best person to speak to that would be Leslie Harton, I, but I, her microphone's muted, so I don't, I don't wanna steal her thunder. I, oh. Do you do you want to take this, or do you want me to take this? I think it's on you. <laughs> okay, um, I want to make sure that I understood the question properly because I wasn't expecting this. Um, you're wondering if the variable names in the MODFs conform to any ontologies? Are are consistent, compatible with uh, the controlled vocabularies used or ontologies used by? other players in this realm, like Pangea or ABC? I believe so. Every very, we are working very hard to make sure that every variable in the MODF has a CMIP name or a CMIP-like name taken from the CMIP6 tables, if we can possibly find it there. We're also making sure that each of them has a standard name oh. and a long name taken from, I don't know the right spreadsheet in front of me. I want to say the CF, yeah. the CF convention. So we're using CF conventions and yes, we every variable should have three different names associated with it that are coming from, as far as possible, standardized vocabularies that are identified. Um, and some of the variables we can't find a compatible name in one of those vocabularies, but between the three of them, I think it's going to be easy to nail that down and to compare with other um, data sets and other ontologies. And I'll add a little to that, and that's to say that Leslie and Siri Giotta have done a lot of work to make sure that those make sense in the context of all the vocabularies that are available. And then that's a big part of the toolkit that is being built that ideally all of the sites are going to be using to create these files because it ensures that they follow along with the vocabulary. So the data sets meet the specification that we've outlined for the file format. This is great to hear and you know, kudos to you all. I think you all are setting a precedent really for a harmonization of um, uh, variable measure, if you will. And, um, and uh, yeah. I, I, along the same regards, I think publishing the data policy before the campaign starts is another uh, nice, uh, something that should be a standard practice. And for the Arctic Data Center side, uh, we now kind of annotate uh, all of our uh, attributes uh, for a particular data set uh, as best as we can uh, with the exo ontology and um, part of the ontology that we're making specifically for Mosaic will align with uh, the Pangea event IDs that include like their campaign identifiers and um, various identifiers related to like the devices and all that will align with, with their vocabulary there. And I think Earlier, there's been a meeting with like 
before I joined on the team that there was a meeting with uh, YOP and the Arctic Data Center uh, where we did discuss uh, uh, variables, but I wasn't really sure uh, the exact uh, outcome of that. Great, thank you. One comment to just add on to the last thing he said, Bill, it's, I think the exciting part about the MODF, although it's geared towards modeling and process studies with modeling is just that it will be homogenizing these data sets across the Arctic in a way that is useful for all sorts of studies. Um, I, I, I try to emphasize that when, whenever anybody's interested in these data sets. Hey, um, this is Jonathan Blythe. I um, wanted to just put in a plug. We have a um, Arctic data team meeting um, on Thursday and uh, we'll be touching on some of the same topics that were brought up today. Uh, William Manley, who just spoke, was is going to be presenting the Polar Observing Asset Working Group um, that we're going to start working on really uh, diligently over the next 12 months. And then uh, we'll have a, talk, a separate talk on um, the uh, data licensing and international data sharing. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you're available, we'd love to have you on Thursday afternoon or morning, depending where you live. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Jonathan. Other, other comments or announcements? I, I would like to pose a question. It's more of sure. a question, uh, mostly to Yasmin. My name is Björn Erlingsson. I'm in Iceland. I'm not part of this crowd of mosaic data. So, uh, but I'm, I'm eager to wait for uh, usable data for uh, theoretical studies on uh, CIS modeling, process, uh, mechanical processes modeling. And uh, and I'm very excited about this data, and uh, I'm also curious about the uh, the licensing. And uh, did I understand uh, correctly, Jasmine, that all NSF supported data is Creative Commons zero and Creative Commons by licensed? And uh, do you expect this pool of data licensing will grow from the European side or? Uh, or what have you? I I'm I I have been looking at uh, what what's going on in the mosaic, and I'm overwhelmed by this uh, large pool, and I really don't want to put much effort into exploring the possibility to get in touch with the data be before it gets uh, open access, and uh, and also uh, a lot of the ideas I have are of exploratory nature and, uh, and I would not uh, put effort into uh, getting data access uh, upon uh, promising uncertain outcome and uh, awake ideas. Can you, uh, can you comment on this? And, uh, and also, I would just have a remark and suggest that uh, it would be arranged a, a hackathon on combined data exploration and scientific uh, or uh, process and physics analysis cutting cross disciplines. That's just an idea that would be very fruitful because the, there's relatively high friction in getting access to data. It, it's getting lower and be, becoming better, but, uh, but I would, uh, mean that uh, such an uh, activity would uh, cut down some corners and uh, lower thresholds. Thank you. So just to clarify your question, you were wondering if kind of beyond yeah, the, yeah, like, the, the licenses the, that we uh, offer kind of beyond that, like when we include like the Pangea and like ARM data sets, like, are they under the same licenses? Is that? Yeah, I, I would just, uh, do you expect that the uh, Creative Commons licensing part of the data will grow? So, so it's freely open early on. I mean, yeah, we can also wait, and, but, uh, but it would, uh, 
and the harmonizing of referencing and uh, putting up DOI indexing uh, solid uh, for uh, upon tentative uh, uh, publishing and reference so, is very good. Okay. Yeah, so most federal, most US federal agencies require this open and free data policy for federally funded research. Um, and, and as soon as possible, basically as soon as the data is quality assured and quality controlled. Um, so there's no um, exclusive data access period for mm -hmm. um, for US um, federally funded data sets because it's paid for by taxpayers. And, uh, and we want uh, and we want uh, the international community to to use our data uh, right away. Yeah. The data will only be private for a very short period of time when we're processing it on our end. Um, but then afterwards, it'll be publicly available to anyone who visits our site. Thank you. That was a good question. Any other questions? I know we're over time, but um, it's it's uh, Matthew. Any final parting comments? Um, well, the Mosaic data set is awesome. We'll just say that much. And so everybody should be very interested in using it. And you know, it's our it's on us the you know the data side of things to get that data available to people and. You know, we're trying to do that as, as quickly as possible, but it's, it's a great data set. So I really hope a lot of people are interested in using it. All right, and just a reminder to everyone to, um, to cite their data, use those DOIs, make it easy for everyone to know where to get more data or where you got your data, where, 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 if they wanna go um, do similar work. Um, and uh, thank, thank you everyone for hanging around so long. Have a great uh, rest of your week and we'll see you next month. And, and there's other meetings, other Arctic meetings. The modeling sub team has a meeting and the data team has a meeting. So um, take care. Thanks everyone.